Let me ask you this question. Did you ever wake up at 6 a.m. on your only free Sunday morning because your neighbor had to use his DeWalt drill to do whatever handiwork he could have done at any other point in the day? Not letting you have the sleep you so desperately need and deserve? Well, it wasn't always like that. In fact, before the 1940s, almost nobody owned an electric drill. And the only reason why almost everyone has a drill at home these days is because of one man and two of the most despicable groups of people imaginable. Nazis and women. So, in this video we're going to take a look at the history of the drill and see how these two groups of people accidentally started a power tool revolution. Now drills have been around for a very long time. Around 37,000 years ago humans discovered that if you put a sharp stone on a stick and spin it between your hands, you'll be able to make small holes in softer materials. This was a breakthrough in technology for early humans and this meant that for the first time in history we could hang our family pictures on the cave wall instead of painting it on the cave wall like a bunch of savages. Truly laying the groundwork for our modern society. Then around 10,000 years ago we invented the bow drill. By putting a stick between a bow and moving it back and forward we could drill through things much more efficient than just with the hand. Now if you ever watched the YouTube video of somebody surviving in the wild you've probably seen a bow drill. It's this thing right here that they used to make a fire. Now another thing that people used the bow drill for was dentistry. Archaeologists discovered a graveyard in Pakistan that was around 7 to 9 thousand years old with 9 adult bodies found in there and in between these 9 bodies they found 11 teeth that were drilled into. And at that time there was no other tool that could make holes so they concluded the only thing that could have happened with these bodies was somebody used a bow drill to drill holes in their teeth. Just wanted to share that horrifying fact with you. Just imagine in how much pain you have to be to voluntarily let somebody drill in your mouth with one of these things. The Romans also invented a drill called the pump drill and yeah, it's it's pretty neat. I don't know, I kind of expect a little bit more from the people who invented the aqueducts. The medieval people also had a crack at inventing ways to drill holes. In between dying of disease and stabbing each other with sharp objects, they did came up with a few designs that came out pretty neat, namely the agar, the brace and the gimlet. And this being in the middle ages, these things were used for maybe a little bit more than just woodworking. Okay, let's skip a few hundred years and go to Australia. In 1889, Arthur James Arnett and William Blanche Brain patented the first electric drill. Now these things didn't look at all like a modern drill. These were big heavy pieces of machinery that were meant for industry and mining. You needed at least two people to operate this thing, so yeah, it was kind of logic that nobody had this laying around in their house. For a somewhat more modern looking drill, we need to go a little bit further in time to 1917 when Black & Decker patented the first pistol grip drill. Now this thing already looks a lot more familiar, it looks like something you can go out and buy at a hardware store, but still at that time these drills were considered like for mining and industry, so there wasn't really an option for the average Joe to get one of these electric drills, it was more meant for contractors or miners, people that needed specialized tools. But that would change after one event. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked a military base in Pearl Harbor. The very next day, the US declared war on Japan. A state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. A few days after that, the Germans declared war on the US. So now, Uncle Sam had to end slap a jab and they had to deal with the Deutsch. Suffice to say, they needed a lot of manpower not only for the army, but also for things like the factories. So they decided to do the unthinkable. Hire women. And in real, it was the perfect timing. Power tools like the drill have become a lot smaller and lighter. The newer drills were made out of light aluminum instead of heavy casted steel. So when these new workers came into the factory, they had these new machines waiting for them and they found it really comfortable and easy to use. Maybe even a little bit too comfortable and easy to use. One of the manufacturers of these new tools was Black & Decker. You probably know these guys, they are still around today and they are still selling power tools or this grill. I swear this was like the first thing that came up when I typed in Black & Decker, I don't know why. 
And at that time, this man was one of their executives. Alonzo Decker Jr., the son of Alonzo Decker, one of the founders of Black Decker. Now, Jr. was not an idiot, he was not one of these people that got a cushion job from daddy. No, 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 no. He was actually a pretty smart guy. He was a businessman and an engineer, so he actually knew what he was doing in the company. Now, even though he was an engineer, and even though he was a decent businessman, he still got fired at his father's company by his own father. He survived a few years by selling soaps, and eventually was allowed to come back at Black Decker as a floor sweeper. I'm starting to get the idea that Alonso didn't really like Junior that much. Anyway, Junior worked up the ranks and by 1940 he was back at his old position. And at that position he oversaw the orders, so he saw which factory ordered how many drills. And he started to notice a lot of duplicate orders, factories that ordered machines, and then the next month ordered machines again. And Alonso Jr. got worried about the amount of orders that were placed by these factories. He started to suspect that his drills were burning out or just breaking. So he was calling around these factories, trying to check what was going on, what was going wrong with the drills. Turns out, these drills don't break down or burn out. But the women that were working in these factories, they were stealing them in large numbers. Apparently, after working with these drills, they find these things so useful that they thought, you know what, this is also useful for in the house, for some smaller jobs, and they just took it with them. But I have to say, ladies, come on, have a little bit of respect. Things like oil and food were rationed at that time. And you're just here stealing tools from the factory you're working at. Where was this Rosie the River there, let's be patriotic and win this war together attitude? Come on, that's <laughs> so bad. Well, at least this was good news for Alonso Jr. who had to prove that his product was good and durable. But besides that, that there was also a market for these electric drills besides industry and mining. They couldn't immediately start producing these drills for the just the normal market because, you know, war. There was like some restrictions with what you could do and what you could make and what you could sell. So they had to wait till after the war. But in 1946, Black & Decker came out with their first electric drill that was meant for the average consumer. At $16.95, it wasn't really cheap. It's around $250 in today's money. But hey, an electric drill? It's a great gift for your husband who recently returns from Europe. Maybe if he picks up a hobby or two, he will forget all about the horrors that he's seen during the war. Black & Decker made around 8,000 of these drills just to see how the market would react. Again, it's an unproven market, maybe nobody wants one of these things. And they were sold out almost immediately. Just like an air fryer today, even though almost nobody had one of these things a few years ago, we all collectively decided, I need to have an electric drill in my house right now. And it became one of those hot items to have after the war. And this want for electric tools didn't stop at just the electric drill. After Black & Decker proved that there was a market for electric tools and demonstrated that people actually wanted to buy these things and have them in their house, there was an explosion of tools that would make your life just a little bit easier. Anything that could be plugged in the wall was a hot item all of a sudden. From saws to angle grinders to nail guns, if you could plug it into the wall, there was a market for it. In only 70 years, we went from nobody having electric tools to 55% of all Americans having at least five or more power tools in their possession. And all of that thanks to some unpatriotic thieves. So you know what? I salute you and I thank you for stealing those power tools. Because without you stealing those power tools, I wouldn't be able to finish my Sunday projects. Now if you excuse me, I need to continue with this. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I really appreciate that. If you did like these kind of videos, I would really appreciate it as well if you could leave a like or a comment. If you want to see more, I have another video up about the development of the L96A1. It's a rifle. It's a really interesting story. So if you want to watch that, then you can click there. And if you want to see more, then uh, please subscribe.